You're live. You How will about? learn to read in the original language. You will know the meaning of the letter. When we're done, you will be able to read the enigmatic writings on the stones before the flood. Today's letter is Tav. And of all the letters in the original Hebrew alphabet, Tav is the most enigmatic. Every other letter in Hebrew is a picture of something physical that you can touch or see, like a house or a door. Tav is not a physical object. You have to make a Tav or write one down. It's a picture of a mark. And as a mark of its uniqueness, Tav has uses in Hebrew words that no other letter shares. As you've probably learned by now, all of the letters in Father's alphabet have a specific meaning within Hebrew words. But Tav appears in some words where it seems to have no meaning at all. And it's even part of the one word in Hebrew that no one knows how to translate. Part of the reason we created this series was to show you that Father's letters are not mysterious. In fact, they are quite simple to learn and to use. You can mark my words. Tav is no different. This letter just takes a little longer to explain. We'll start off today's episode in the book of Ezekiel with Father's explanation of what the letter Tav represents. What are you doing? I am a... I am marking a place. I am tobbing it. <laughs> In the 6th century BC, just before Babylon destroyed the first temple, the Bible tells us that the city of Jerusalem had become a place of bloodshed and idol worship, and that because of this, Father's judgment was coming soon. He showed Ezekiel the destroyers that he was sending, and he also showed Ezekiel an amazing sign. Father was placing a man in front of the destroyers who had the inkhorn of a scribe. That man with the inkhorn was instructed to tava, a tav, onto the foreheads of anyone in the city who, instead of participating in the evils of the day, was sighing and groaning over all of the abominations in the land. To tava a tav in Hebrew is literally to mark tava, a mark, tav. Anyone with father's tav, with his mark, in those days, was spared from the judgment which would eventually destroy the city. Jeremiah tells us about one of the righteous men who was in that city who would have received Father's Tav in those days. His name was Ebed Melech, which in Hebrew means servant of the king. Some of us will live through times of judgment in this world, and I think that the words that Father spoke to Ebed Melech were as much for him as they are for us. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the guard. Go and say to Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, Thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will fulfill my words against this city for harm and not for good, and they shall be accomplished before you on that day. But I will deliver you on that day, declares the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely save you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but you shall have your life as a prize of war, because you have put your trust in me, declares the Lord. In a lot of Hebrew words, the letter Tav is used simply to mean mark or marker. 
I'll show you a few examples of that and then we'll talk about what makes Tav very interesting. Our first word is Katab, which is a word that we went over in our cough episode and it means to write. So to write in the original Hebrew letters is a picture of your hand, your cough, marking the inside of something. Now that could be you using your hand to make an inscription into something like clay or to mark the inside of a book, a piece of paper, or a piece of parchment. There's also the word et, which in Hebrew means time. And time can be viewed as a series of observable markers. Every Sabbath, for example, marks the end of a week in Father's calendar. And Father has created a lot of things that we can use as markers to observe the passing of time. We have sunrises, sunsets, the seasons, and his feast days. All of these are markers for et, for time. This is the letter Kof, which is a picture of the palm of the hand. And one of the most common meanings of the letter Kof in Hebrew words is to crush. Now there's a word in Hebrew, katat, kaf, tav, tav, which means to crush. So this word, katat, basically just has the meaning of the letter kaf. So what's the meaning of these two tavs in this word katat? And here's where we get to the part where the letter tav is a little bit difficult to explain. Tav is a mark. And a mark is defined as a symbol of something. One of the trademarks or the hallmarks of the letter kaf is that it means to crush. In this word here, the tavs are showing you what the trademark symbol of kaf is. And that is that kaf is a crusher. Let me show you another word. The letter resh is a picture of a head. And the letter itself is often used in Hebrew words to mean beginning. There's also the word rosh, which would be the full spelling of the letter. And this word rosh in the scriptures is used to mean beginning. Now, if you add a tav to the end of the word rosh, you have another word, which means beginning. The tav is not altering the meaning of the other letters. Instead, it's serving to enhance the meaning, to strengthen it and to point it out. It's indicating to you that you need to look at the other letters for the meaning of this word. I could give a lot of examples here, but here's one that's pretty clear to see. This is the letter Nahash, also known as Nun. And in the original Hebrew alphabet, the letter was a picture of a snake. Now there's a word Tanin in Hebrew, which is two snakes and a tav. And this word, tanin, means serpent. So the meaning of tanin is pictured in just these two letters. The tav in this word, as we can see, is not changing the meaning of the other two letters. It's just pointing it out. It's telling you that this word tanin is the mark of the letter nahash. And the letter nahash is a serpent. Therefore, the word means serpent. Okay, so we are finally at Tav. Everybody's been waiting for Tav. Can you please hurry and do Tav? <laughs> We're here. Uh, so we have uh, a great, a great uh, little thing we started here, and everyone seems to like it. And we didn't mean to, 
but I can't resist. What's up? I'm gonna give you a pop quiz. Are you ready? One more for the road. Well, I am ready. We are ready. Uh, three, maybe four questions. Okay. Maybe four, because it is a pop quiz. Okay. So, okay, everybody, we're gonna ask Dawson these three, and let's see how she does. One, uh, how do you use Tov? Because it's it's not an actual picture of anything. It's not a cow, a bird, a foot. Right. A, it's just a it's just a sign. Yes. So yes, yes. it's used in words to mean mark, to mean sign. Um, it strengthens the meaning of other parts of the word, of other letters. As mm -hmm. I, I showed that a uh, little bit have, before. Some have two T's, two T's. Yes. It can be used to mean uh, inscribe or, or mark as a signature. Oh yeah, such as put your uh, top on the line right here. Yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, number two, there's something else that uses a sign, but it's not just tav. In this word, they add a aleph and a tav. Aleph tav, yes. So the, the Hebrew word sign, which... Uh, well, how, by the way, how you pronounce that word? Uh, it's typically pronounced Ot, but it could be ot. I would say it's probably ot because but, it is an olive. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so an, an ot is a, a sign. Yeah. But by the way, we're not going to split hairs no. here on how to pronounce it. Not at all. Uh, we'd rather know what it means. Yeah. So, so ot, ot, it's all good. Yeah, so essentially a, it's a strong mark. It's, it's a sign. And that word is uh, used a lot to mean miracle in the oh. scriptures. Now, uh, Father said we have a rainbow for a sign. Is that a tav or an or an ot? That's an ot. That's a ot. Yeah. That's question number two. Pretty good. Yeah. Now, uh, I know you mentioned in uh, in Ezekiel how Father sends a. I'm gonna take that Yeshua. I'm sure that goes on and seals yeah, all the fathers, I think uh, so too. father's children, uh, before uh, before he judged them. Before he brought judgment and wrath on him. And I notice in Revelation, the fifth angel, before anything, hold on, going on to father's children, the, the Bebanim, and put a, a mark on their forehead. Now, is that a Tav or an Ot? You know, we I know, don't... I know that's Greek. It's Greek. But, it's Greek. So we but, don't know for sure. But if we had to... Get? If we had to make an educated guess, uh -huh. uh, I would say that, that it's a Tav. I would say that, um, and you know, Tav gets kind of a bad rap because yes, it's a it mark. It's a mark. And the mark that most people are familiar with is the mark of the beast. But yeah. like The most saying, important one is father's mark on his children because it separates you from uh, the wrath coming. Yes. It's the same as putting blood on the door. Yes. So that... The death angel passes by you, and all the father's sheep are nice and safe. Yes. Now, the blood was put on the door as an oat, as oat. a sign. See, there you go. Yeah. It's an oat. Yeah. So, but I would think that um, when father places his seal onto, onto his people mm -hmm. um, before judgment comes, that that would be the same as a tav, just because the story is so similar to what happened in the days of Ezekiel. It's a mark on the forehead placed onto his children. And father doesn't them. change. He doesn't change. So if he separated his children back then, he will certainly do it again uh, for what's coming. Yes. So yeah, I, it's good to it's good to know about father's mark. He places a mark on our forehead that the, only the angels can see. And and uh, it'll be a lot of wars, rumors of wars. Now, we're not to get involved because uh, in these days, Unlike any other days, the angels are being sent to separate the sheep from the goats, and they do it by that top. Yeah. Some will have a sign for for uh, being put on the left side, and some will have a top for being put on the right side. So we always make sure that Yeshua helps us in our walk to be on the right side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, as far as the beast, that's for the world, uh, wrath for the world and, and for uh, the children of, uh, of, of rebellion. But not for us. We love Father. We're here to be uh, uh, nurtured and fed for three and a half years in the wilderness. Yep. And may you have that top 
on your forehead so uh, Father's Holy Spirit can lead you. You mentioned the rainbow, the, the sign, the oat of the covenant before. Oat. Yes. So I have a pop quiz for you as well. One more for the road. Here we go. Uh, this is this one's pretty simple. So the the word for rainbow in Hebrew is keset. Keset. Now is that keset with a kuf or a kaf? Kuf. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's so easy. <laughs> I mean, if you if you watch the original Hebrew, yeah, it would be easy. Okay. Now that same word keset is that last. T- that last T sound, a tet or a tav? Well, watch. He gave he gave the rainbow as a sign of a covenant. Yes. So it is absolutely he signed it with a tav. Yes, you got it. Do you see see how easy uh, Father's alphabet is? It's a sign between Father and us, and he signed it. So of course it's a tav. Yeah. Not a tet. There's one more uh, tav, an ot, that uh, I noticed, in, and uh, those are ots that are not for everybody. Notice when uh, Father sent the sign of a star on, uh, on Yeshua's uh, birth, that only the shepherds saw it, but not people in Israel. And then the, the stargazers, the star, the star followers saw it, the magi, uh, and that was it. There was no one else. So some signs are not for everybody. Yeah. And uh, and it says, like, he seals it up so they can't see. So ask Father that you see his signs and that you hear his word and that you're led by spirit in this days. So you could have an ot, a, a sign from Father. You know, there's a uh, there's something that Yeshua said, and I think everyone sort of gets it wrong based on something that you had told me years ago, um, which is he's saying that unless you unless you see miracles, you won't believe. And so everyone assumes that when he says that he's angry and he's being sarcastic, like, oh, you people will only believe if you see a miracle. Mm-hmm. But you have a different opinion on that. Oh, yeah. Miracles are signs. And, and those signs and those wonders bring people into the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, when uh, when um, uh, he met the apostles, he would he would uh, he would give them signs and wonders, and that's how they came in. You know, I saw you under the tree. You know, or yeah. or you you will be called Peter. He, he, it's it's signs and wonders, and uh, they they need it. Well, uh, the best part about it is uh, he gives us the ability. To ask, I mean, uh, we could ask, Father, we need your healing power. Father, we need a miracle here. Father, we need, uh, we need a lot of things, and and uh, Father hears us. It isn't like uh, there are benefits <laughs> to walking with Father. He uh, he hears his sheep, and those are signs. He gives us uh, signs by uh, by uh, answer to prayer. He gives us signs by sometimes he'll. Send us a, a verse and just when you need it. He gives us signs and wonders. So uh, it's part of our walk. The greatest sign of all, the greatest ot, that is a alf and a tav. The greatest ot of all is when everybody looks up and they see the ot of the Son of Man coming yes. in the clouds. That's to be the, the best ot ever. That's, that's, that is amazing. An Aleph and a Tav. Ot, we will see, we will see Yeshua returning with, with all the saints, just in time, uh, down here to get us out of this mess. <laughs> that, uh, Satan has done.
right? So, hallelujah, and I praise Father. I like the way some of you praise Yah. I, I love the way all of you call Father's name. There's many names, and they all glorify His name. May they all be a tav of our uh, love for Father. Yeah. Right? Bless all Father's sheep, and shalom unto Jerusalem. So now that the series is over, what are your plans? I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe Father will give me a sign on what to do next. Maybe he'll give you a sign in Paleo. That would be awesome. Hey, there's Paleo on that rock over there. That, that you... rock way, <laughs> way over there. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, way over yonder. That's some pretty good vision that you have. <laughs> well, I got 2020 vision. Let's go see what it says. <laughs> Maybe it's some guidance on what to do next. Learn to read in the original language. You will know the meaning of the letter. When we're done, you will be able to read the enigmatic writings on the stones before the flood. Okay, what does it say? Lamed, shepherd's staff, cough, the hand, yep. leh. What does that mean? Pick up your lamed, your staff, put it in your cough, your and leh. And go. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess that's all the guidance we get. Just keep on leh. That's right. Leh, leh, leh. Leh, leh, leh. We're going to leh, leh. Leh, leh, leh. We're going to leh, leh. Wow, there's a song. <laughs> There you have it, folks. On your tav, get set, lech. May you enjoy the rest of your walk on Hadarek, and hopefully we'll get to see you along the way. See you guys. There we are. There we are. One strong leads to where we are. a beautiful desire to learn your ways and seek your heart and when the days are full of fire to know that
Oh.